What's going on everybody? It's Thursday, September 21st. This is Cody from BC Divide. I normally cover the Iowa State side of things, but today I'm going to take a few minutes to uh, kind of break down this Penn State offense a little bit. Uh, this is an offense that I really truly think Iowa is going to struggle to stop on Saturday. It's an offense that is uh, one of the best in the nation uh, as far as yards per carry, uh, rushing wise with Saquon Barkley. Uh, they, they really uh, move the ball at a, at a quick pace. Uh, as well, which is can be troublesome for a defense that uh, lacks some depth and uh, wears out pretty quickly, which I think uh, was evident in the game against like Iowa State uh, and some of that North Texas game, I guess. But uh, no, this just to break down some of the key players for this Penn State team. Uh, they have a running back named Saquon Barkley. This kid is uh, he's he's going to be a top five, probably top ten uh, pick in the NFL draft. Uh, he could go out this year if he wanted to. He's got another year under his belt if he wants to as well. Stick around for another year. But uh, he's a stud. He's, he's, a, he's a guy that I like to uh, watch in film. I just finished up watching some film a little bit ago. And he's a guy to me that looks – he plays a lot like Le'Veon Bell. Uh, you really, really, really have to do your best to stop him in the backfield uh, before he gets leverage and gets anything outside because the kid is tough to bring down. He has a ton of speed, uh, and he's, uh, I mean, the, the proof is, is in the weight room. You know, the kid, I was watching a video earlier today, and uh, he, he squats or power cleans, excuse me, 405 pounds. He's, he power cleans more than 80% of the team uh, at Penn State, and he's a running back. I should say a lot. You know, it's it's also in his blood. His grandfather was a three-time uh, world championship boxer, uh, so you know he's got some uh, athletic ability in his in his body for sure. But <clears throat> so far this season, Saquon's averaging 8.1 yards per carry. He's got three touchdowns. That's that averages out to 102 yards per game so far, uh, rushing the ball. Uh, but it, but his ability to beat teams and really become uh, it, make it tougher for teams to stop Penn State and the, the kind of the, their three-headed attack offensively is the fact that he is he's the team's leading uh, receiver as well. Um, you know, he, he's accounted for 241 receiving yards. Uh, the next closest wide receiver on this Penn State offense has, I believe, 187 yards. So, um, you know... The kid's an absolute beast, um, so it's going to be tough for Iowa and their linebackers, who I don't think are the best uh, pass-protecting uh, linebackers, or not protecting per se, but uh, the best linebackers with pass coverage. Um, and then you you throw a, a kid like Trace McSorley in the mix. Trace McSorley is their quarterback. Uh, he's their second leading rusher. Okay, and the reason he's the second leading rusher is because what they do better than any other team I've seen so far on film this year is their ability to use the RPO. For those of you not familiar, an RPO is a run pass option. It gives the uh, quarterback the ability to either pass the ball or run the ball. And when I say run the ball, it, it's it's a variation of runs. It could be a, a run where he keeps it. It could be a run, uh, an end around with a receiver coming over. Uh, it could be a, a handoff to Saquon Barkley on an outside zone play. Uh, it could be a number of different things. And that's what's so tricky about this offense. And it's on Tuesday, all the players said it in their player interviews. They said, we have to key our players. We have to take care of our responsibilities first before we can move on and try and help other people out. And, and that's huge because in, in a game like this where you're facing a Penn State team, gap responsibility is absolutely dynamic and, and to getting off the ball, off the field, on defense. It's imperative that Iowa has great gap responsibility on Saturday. And, uh, and, then, and then they have to read their keys. You know, Just like Trace McSorley will be at the line of scrimmage. He's a, he's a shotgun quarterback, but He'll be up at the line of scrimmage, and a lot of these RPOs, for those of you that aren't familiar with run pass options, it's a read, okay? He's either reading the tight end, he's reading the outside linebacker. He knows what that kid's responsibility is, and, and he's going to exploit it. Uh, in the first uh, half against, uh, actually the first drive of the game against the Pitt team uh, two weeks ago, and really what was the only game so far that Penn State has played in competitively, uh, Trace McSorley got up to the line of scrimmage on about the 10-yard line, and... Uh, you know, it's a beautiful RPO. They have a tight end who stands six foot six, Jacecki. The guy's a stud. He's got four touchdowns, and he's a killer inside the red zone so far. Um, all eyes are obviously on the All American tailback, okay, with, at Saquon Barkley. So, what does Barkley do? He lines up, he reads the linebacker, looks as though he knows the linebacker is going to come on not necessarily a blitz, but he's keying on what Barkley does. So, he bites on the fake to Barkley, and Jacecki's wide open over the middle for a, a short little touchdown and a quick seven against Pittsburgh. But uh, it really truly is a three headed monster for Penn State. Um, Trace McSorley, not only can he run the ball at a quarter, as a quarterback, but he's a great passing quarterback as well. He's averaging 251 yards per game right now. 
He's only thrown two interceptions uh, out of 76 passing attempts. So those numbers are those are all American numbers. Uh, first team, uh, second team, all American numbers right now on a team that's undefeated coming into Kinnick Stadium on Saturday. So. Um, from a, from a standpoint of total yards, uh, Iowa or is really, or excuse me, Penn State is averaging 469 yards of total offense per game. That's uh, obviously just a clip under 500 yards. That's phenomenal offense. Okay, they're they're really truly grinding defensively. They're only averaging giving up 273 yards of total offense to the uh, so to the, whoever they're playing so far. Now, granted, keep in mind they have not played the best game, the best teams in the country. You know, I would argue that Iowa has played a, a tougher schedule than Penn State so far, but don't don't hold that against this Penn State team because they're obviously coming in to Kinnick Stadium and is double digit favorites for favorites for a reason. So uh, keep that in mind. But um, passing wise, they're averaging 282 yards a game. They're averaging giving up 147. So they got great pass rush, great cornerbacks and, and linebackers that can really move. Uh, rushing wise, they're averaging just a clip under 200 yards per game. Anytime you have two kids like Trace McSorley and uh, Saquon Barkley, obviously you're, those numbers uh, for average rushing yards per game are going to be up there because those two boys can run the ball they're fast and they're hard to bring down uh, one key thing to the game on Saturday uh, should the Iowa Hawkeyes be able to stick in this game and stay close with this tough Penn State team uh, it's going to be their ability to uh, have, have capitalize on specialty uh, special teams uh, this uh, Penn State team comes in and then one one concern I have for them special team wise is that Tyler Davis is their kicker his long on the season's 47 yards good kick I mean that's a, a kick that a division one kicker should make but uh He's only had four field goal attempts, uh, and I haven't haven't studied too much of the Iowa offense yet this week, but I'll get to that later tonight. But the uh, he's two of four, fifty percent. Okay, so in a, in a game where pressure is on the line, the stadium's going to be loud. We know that uh, he's going to be nervous as hell. And for him to go out there, if he has to make any clutch kicks, you can be damn sure that that kid's going to be shaking in his boots uh, at that kicking position. So it'll be interesting to see how Tyler Davis stands up uh, uh, to the, the tough test that is Kinnick Stadium on Saturday. Uh, their punter, his name is Blake Gilligan. He's a good kid. Averages 45 yards per punt. Uh, just to put that in reference, Colin Downing for Iowa State was having a great year punting-wise right now. was averaging 47 yards per punt. So a 45-yard average on a punt is, is a pretty darn good average. Not many return yards for their opposition this year. So, um, And then uh, one thing that is worth noting special team-wise is that the All-American kid, Saquon Barkley, he also has 107 yards on uh, on kick return as well. So he really is a kid that you that can beat you on, on multiple faucets of the game and facets of the game. And I, I really think that... Uh, Iowa's ability to to stop him. I know it's it's been written everywhere and talked about by everyone, but they truly have to stop that kid, and, and then they have to hope they can uh, stop Trace McSorley uh, from beating them himself because he's a quarterback that can single-handedly win a ball game for a football team. Um, when we talk about the importance of Saquon Barkley and how important he is to this Penn State team, I, I, just use this for reference, okay? Penn State has 1,826 total yards of offense, okay? Saquon Barkley has 655 of those in all-purpose yards, okay? So almost a third, or it is a third, it's, it's over a third, of uh, their total offense on this team has come from Saquon Barkley. Whether that be return yards, uh, receiving yards, or rushing yards, the kid is an, an absolute playmaker, and if the Iowa Hawkeyes can't stop him, this game's going to get out of hand and, and could be uh, over by halftime, and that crowd could be leaving that game a whole lot earlier than they were expecting to. So uh, it's going to be imperative for the Hawks to get out there and stop Saquon Barkley, Trace McSorley, and Jacecki at tight end, and then play good, sound football. With uh, they they got to tackle, you know, they got to gang tackle. You got to get guys to the ball. Pursuit angles are going to be huge as well. And so uh, I know Josie talked about that Tuesday when Ben was over there interviewing the players. Uh, he he kept he was repeating pursuit angles, pursuit angles, pursuit angles, and that's something that's talked about as at the high school level or middle school level to kids. And so you know the importance of of it. Uh, when it comes to fun playing fundamental football. So uh, in order to do that, you got to have great gap responsibilities, and then you have to have great pursuit angles uh, at the linebacker position or even at the defensive line position. So it'll be interesting to see how this game goes, but uh, Derek and I will be over there on Saturday. So if you want to come hang out and do a little tailgating with the BC Divide crew,